Greetings from the Pacific Ocean and Bulovinaka from wherever you are tuned in from and a special welcome to our deaf community. We hope you are excited as much as we are as this is our first University of the South Pacific Pacific European Union Marine Partnership Program virtual live event from Fiji's capital and Suva. I am Josephine Prasad, honoured to be given this privilege. Just a little bit more about this amazing USB component of the PIM program. The objective is to build capacity through education, training, research and development for coastal communities in fisheries and marine resource management. And of course, the USB is one of the four key implementing partners of the overall PIM program. The program is a 45 million euro initiative funded by the European Union and the Government of Sweden. And we did tell you this, so now we're going to let you win prizes. We welcome the USP PUM project leader, Leanne Puliwurua. Thank you, Josephine. I know Christmas is five months down the line, but there's always every reason to get a goodie bag. For the first trivia question of today, you will email us the answer to peump at usp.ac.fj. And the question is, in which ocean do we find the largest floating garbage patch? In which ocean do we find the largest floating garbage patch? You can only win the goodie bag if you email us the answer to peump at usb.ac.fg. Thank you, Leanne. Always a great moment to be able to spread joy by receiving and gifting others. Furthermore, we honored Today, to have the Vice Chancellor and President of the University of the South Pacific as Chief Guest, Professor Paul was the Co Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation at the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom, where he also held the role of Equality and Diversity Champion. He has a PhD in Politics from Flinders University, a Master's and Bachelor of Arts from the University of Saskatchewan in Canada. Thank you, Josephine. Um, the University of the South Pacific's mission is to shape Pacific futures by empowering students, staff, and alumni to become inspirational agents of positive change, leading to innovative, cohesive, resilient, and sustainable communities. Our university is classified as one of the best accredited institutions in the Pacific region. Research focusing on coastal and offshore marine environments is vital for our region as marine resources from the basis of livelihoods for Pacific Islanders. There is a need to learn from communities and support research efforts to derive local research and build capacity relevant to Pacific Island communities. Capacity development and research are fundamental to transforming the, the status quo and to drive innovation and sustainable development. In ensuring that there are equal opportunities for all through inclusive culture, USP has recently introduced the Regional Disability Scholarship for 2021. And I'm really pleased to see that today we're able to also have um, a sign language uh, for all our viewers. Now I'm proud to tell you that the overall PIOP program has poverty alleviation as a key consideration in addition to addressing gender gaps and ensuring rights-based approaches are main mainstream throughout all its interventions. The PUMPS program's overall objective is to improve the economic, social, and environmental benefit for 15 Pacific Island countries. Specifically, the program aims to support sustainable management and development of fisheries for food security and economic growth while addressing climate change, resilience, and the conservation of marine biodiversity. I understand that eight PUMPS scholarships have been offered to regional students to study at the USP, which is a fantastic result for our university. Under this program, the university is responsible for key result area six, which is to build capacity through education, training, research and development for key stakeholder groups in fisheries and marine resources management. I would now like to welcome the Master of Ceremonies to introduce our speaker today, Benaka. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for the reassurance that the University of the South Pacific has an inclusive program and a strong commitment to create an inclusive, barrier free working and learning environment for its students and staff across the Pacific region. 
Now we're going to take a deep dive right into the waters of the Pacific Ocean for the next 15 minutes or so, where we will be listening to our very own Pacific Ocean custodian and Cuban scholarship recipient, Andrew Paris, whose presentation is a precursor to the Global Initiative, International Plastic Bag Free Day, celebrated worldwide with the aim to eliminate the reliance on single-use plastic bags. And he will be sharing with us how Microplastics are prevalent in the waters of Fiji and to seafood we eat, posing a risk to human health and to Mother Earth. Before I invite Andrew to share his initial findings, I am delighted to share the background into why he thought this was such an important issue to research on. Now, the negative impacts of plastic litter on marine life is observed in his own backyard in Pacific Harbor, Fiji, prompted Andrew to pursue this research topic. Prior to undertaking the scholarship, Andrew worked at USP as a part-time tutor for the School of Geography, Earth Science and Environment. He also worked as a research assistant with the School of Marine Studies. Thank you, Josephine. Um, good morning, everyone. Plastics in the Pacific is our dirty little secret. The problem, global plastic production has skyrocketed from 2.3 million tons in 1950 to more than 350 million tons to date. Plastics are used for everything, from buckets to rockets, from towels to towels. At any one time, we have a plethora of plastics in our periphery. Look around you right now. This is not so much the problem. The real problem is when it serves its intended purpose, then becomes discarded discarded here, here, and here. The combined amount of plastic that has been produced from the Pacific and globally has now exceeded 8.3 billion tons, with only 8% of this incinerated and 6% recycled. That leaves a whopping 7.1 million tons of plastic either still in use in landfills or in the environment. Unfortunately, a total of around 150 million tons of plastic that you and I use have already made it into our oceans. The bulk of these plastics in the oceans will take centuries to completely degrade. Take for instance the ubiquitous PET model, which will take 450 years to completely break down. Put into context, if Abel Tasman had brought over plastic bottles to Fiji in 1642, that bottle would still be around today, probably bobbing about in the number Glow Creek. The numbers are shocking. We have become accustomed to this take, make, use, lose linear model, which is the opposite of the natural circular model, whereby elements are continuously recycled with zero waste production. The majority of plastics in the oceans are first irresponsibly discarded on land, then these are transported into the ocean by streams, creeks, rivers, and runoff. For us in the Pacific, being surrounded by the vast expanse of ocean, it will always end up here. Now this is what we are finding out, that it is severely impacting our oceans here. Large plastics suffocate and smother marine life. As plastics in the oceans begin to break up, by the forces of wind, waves, and sunlight, we see the production of what are termed microplastics. These are plastic pieces less than five millimeters in size. Five millimeters is about the size of a grain of rice. These large plastics break up, not down, into millions of tiny pieces which linger for hundreds of years. These float around in the currents and are consumed by marine life the very food we find on our plates. So basically, plastics go down the river, up the food chain, and into us. Here realize the very big problem of tiny plastics. Not only are these plastics affecting the chemistry and physical state of our ocean, it is impacting the very life that depends on it. Plastic pollution is known to harm the fertility, growth, and survival of marine life. Apart from this, microplastics are known to accumulate harmful toxins while floating around at sea. This is what is called the Trojan horse effect. 
microplastics as a Trojan horse, and harmful pollutants are the stealthy Greek assassins. Now this has far-reaching implications for all manner of marine life, from bacteria to blue whales. Lab tests have indicated negative responses to the exposure of marine life, especially corals, which we, in the Pacific, rely on heavily for our sustenance. Picture a Pacific devoid of coral reefs. People of the Pacific will always be disproportionately affected by microplastics because we rely heavily on fish and seafood. Once again, here we are, on the front line of an environmental catastrophe. Sadly, a position we are all too familiar with. Studies also now show that we can be consuming a credit card worth of plastic every week. However, we are yet to figure out the effects of these microplastics on us. This is an emergent body of research. Although my gut feeling is that the results will be far from present. Instead of a silver spoon, future generations will be born with a plastic spoon. Now, I'm not onto diet, but if I did, I would go on a plastic-free diet. Microplastics are everywhere, including in our drinking water, table salt, honey, and the very air and beer that we consume. Every single creature on God's green earth is either exposed to or at risk of being exposed to microplastics. We find them everywhere we look. The other day I read that plastics are being found in the depths of the Arctic Ocean. I guess it's now official. Plastics have now reached areas where the sun doesn't shine. The Pacific is not immune to this plastic perversion. In fact, we seem to be complicit in being careless with our plastic management. A highly acclaimed study by Jambeck in 2015 placed Fiji seventh and Vanuatu second in the world in the amount of mismanaged plastic waste per capita. And consequent studies by the team at the School of Marine Studies at the University of South Pacific has documented high levels of MPs in the super inshore environment. These studies have laid the groundwork for further research and monitoring, really stressing the importance of increasing the scope of the research. You don't have to be analyzing water samples in the lab to realize the scale of the problem. My research work has taken me to the furthest reaches of Fiji, and even here, hundreds of kilometers from any human occupation, I have found microplastics. Out of the hundreds of samples that I have collected, I am yet to find one without microplastics. Now we'll talk briefly on some of the initial results of microplastic assessments carried out in seven sites around Fiji from 2017 to 2019. Not surprisingly, areas around Suva had a high abundance, in particular, Lavala Bay. This is followed by Rekaraki, Ba, Ngaloa, then Dao Samui, Dalevo. The outer islands of Makungai and Kiombo village in Bonolevu were the areas with the lowest abundance. This is not surprising, taking into account a study by the leader of the marine pollution team, Dr. Mata, who has led the plastic research renaissance here in the Pacific. Now, Dr. Mata found that a constant source of microplastics in the marine environment in Suva was from the Kinoya Waste Water Treatment Plant. Suva now takes the title as the trashiest place in Fiji. In Fiji, the main type of microplastic I have found are fibers. Now, it is understood that these microfibers originate during the washing of synthetic clothes, which causes its separation from the material. A single synthetic fabric can release hundreds of thousands of microfibers upon washing. Now, although the sources of plastics in the marine environment are varied, an initial analysis of the plastics shows that polyethylene and polyethylene terephthalate are the most common polymer types that we find in surface waters. Polyethylene is the main component of plastic bags and plastic food wrapping, while polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, as it is commonly known, is the main component of plastic bottles and even polyester in synthetic clothes, very common in the Pacific. These plastics that we are using to wrap our food to keep it from harmful pollutants has now become the harmful pollutant. 
These results are in line with the initial hypothesis that areas with high population densities tend to release more microplastics. However, ocean currents like winds, ocean currents and winds can cause accumulation in certain areas like coastal embayments and ocean gyres. Convergent currents have also been found to cause microplastic hotspots in certain areas seemingly unaffected by larger plastics. Now how do we begin to deal with a problem that's so pervasive? There is no plastic silver bullet to this problem. The solution is far too complex for any one organization or government ministry. To prevent plastics from hemorrhaging into the marine environment, we must start with ourselves making incremental adjustments to our lifestyles that can significantly reduce plastic consumption. Simple things, for instance, refusing a plastic straw. By the way, did you know that if you lined up all the straws used in Fiji in 2016 alone, it would stretch a distance of approximately 145 kilometers, which is roughly the distance from one end of the level to the other end of the level. We could also reuse plastic bags and purchase cotton t-shirts instead of polyester. Most importantly, we can dispose of rubbish that we create responsibly. If we as individuals choose to make these minor tweaks to our patterns of consumption, we will begin to see a reduction in the levels of plastic pollution. Individually, we create small ripples of change, but collectively, we can create a tidal wave of change to stem the advancing plastic tide. Certain Pacific nations have begun to take steps towards curbing the problem. And thank you, Samoa, you have just banned styrofoam this week. The issue really highlights the connectedness of all Pacific Island countries. My story is your story. This is our story. And before I finish, the evidence we have is telling us we have to act now. We are at a crossroads. Turn right and we're on the path of plastic proliferation. This way, we'll eventually be able to walk from Sulu to Savasavu because there'll be that much plastic in the oceans. Turn left and reduce plastics, we have a chance of saving the marine environment and preventing another plastic nail in our plastic coffin. Now, before we begin to manage, we must first measure. That is the role my research plays in the grand scheme of things. It is my hope that this research provides valuable insight into the levels of microplastics found in surface waters around Fiji. This would be the first comprehensive look at microplastics in surface waters, establishing essential baseline data, data which will be key in developing long-term monitoring programs to detect environmental changes. This way, we can also gauge the effectiveness of, of management actions related to plastic pollution control. Increased focus on microplastics can allow for informed decision making at the local and regional policy level. Now you can draw a lot of parallels between the plastic problem and the climate change problem, although I'm yet to hear from any ocean plastic deniers. The, solution, the solutions are not as complex though. We know how to pick it up. We know how to dispose it. We know how to recycle it. It's just a matter of investing in the right systems to one, increase recyclability, and two, prevent plastics from ending up in the marine environment. <coughs> For a long time, we have, de we have depended on plastics. Now, we are drowning in it. This can no longer be our daily little secret. A cat is out of the plastic bag, and we need to work on this together to overcome the problem. Binaka. Thank you, Andrew, for that thought-provoking research analysis showing us how microplastics enter our marine life and then our food chain. This is indeed a great awareness session about a real and pressing issue brought about by plastics we knowingly and unknowingly dispose in the ocean. And if you are wondering how you can continue to follow exploring the wide open spaces of a lush Tropical Paradise, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at USPIMR. <coughs> now, the flying trade winds passage takes us to New Zealand. Kiorana Russell Barasi, you are the winner of our first trivia question. 
you correctly told us the Pacific Ocean is where the largest floating garbage patches. Do send us your postal address and we will post your goodie bag to you. Thank you, Josephine. And I know you also want a goodie bag too. So get ready for trivia question two. All you have to do is email the answer to peump at usp.ac.fj. So the second question is, what is the main source of microplastic fibers in the marine environment? What is the main source of microplastic fibers in the marine environment? Be the first to email us at peump at usp.ac.fj. I really thought Leanne was going to give me a goodie bag, but nevertheless, I think Andrew and my reward is to answer two motivating questions that have come in from the audience. I must say, I do admire the enthusiasm from around the world. The first question, Andrew, are you ready for this? Um, Talofalaba, Rajinio Singh from Tuvalu, your question is, how does this microplastics issue affect the Pacific Ocean as a whole? Talofalaba, Rajinio. As I alluded to earlier, the microplastic issue really highlights the interconnectedness of all of us in the Pacific. Plastic that is thrown away in Fiji can end up in Tuvalu and vice versa. This is due to the currents, in particular the South Pacific Jaya, that transports the plastics around in the surrounding oceans. Maka. Malo Tonga, thank you for tuning in. And we are joined together by the Pacific Ocean. Alani Lolohia. I like the way you're going to put Andrew on the spot. Andrew, are you ready for this one? What was the most unexpected finding from your research that you would like to share with us? Malo Alani, thank you for the very good question. Um, I would say the most unexpected finding would be detecting higher levels of microplastics in relatively remote and pristine areas in Fiji. Um, these areas are hundreds of kilometers from any inhabited area, and yet, unsurprisingly, we are still finding microplastics here. Inaka. Well, Andrew, thank you. We've learned so much from you today, and I think everyone around the world agrees with me. And more joy. We do have a winner for trivia question two. Hello, Orketa Prisley from the Solomon Islands. Fabric it is. We will be in touch with you about your prize. Wow. Like they say, every good thing must come to an end. What a great and inspiring audience you have been. And on behalf of the Chief Guest, the Vice Chancellor of the University of the South Pacific, Professor Paul Aluwalia, the Dean of the Faculty of Science, Technology and Environment, Dr. Angela Jokert, who provides oversight for the USP component of the program. The USP team, they're all coming up by the way, our sign language interpreters, thank you so much. The live production team from N Studios CG, our media partners in the room and around the world watching, thank you for joining us. Because as you know, right here in the Pacific, the ocean joins us and does not divide us. Our Moana provides us our kai kai and also can be our source of livelihood. Let's continue to be our voices in promoting environmental conservation by encouraging everyone to stay away from the use of single-use plastic bags and instead look for more, 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 more alternatives. Until the next time, Mother Mandat.